Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to recreate this effect of lighting as if it was coming through a sort of forest canopy. You can see that uh, this character as it moves through the, the scene appears to be getting lit as if the sunlight is shining through some leaves above them. Well, how do we create this effect? effect? Well, what we need is a movie you set, obviously with some objects and a character in it. Now let me pull back and look upwards. So you can also see that we need this spotlight. And the theory is that if we load this spotlight to project a black and white image, then any time it finds darkness or black in the image, it will cast a shadow. And any time it finds white, then the light will shine right through. And if you load an appropriate texture, in other words, one with with trees in it, then you get this kind of this kind of dappled light effect. Okay, let me open the uh, the scene to begin with, and I'll just take you through how to how to create it. So here's our starting off point some objects, a character and no lighting in the scene at all. Let's head over to Photoshop and I'll show you what I found. I came across this image um, of some trees against the sky which is absolutely ideal except for a few things. Well the first thing is that it isn't black and white. If we loaded this image into uh, Movie Zoo then what it would do is it would project all sorts of colours on our set and all we really want for a shadow caster is for it to be black and white. So let's try the first and easiest step in Photoshop and go to Desaturate. So this makes it black and white, but you can see that uh, there's not enough contrast between the leaves and the sky. For this to be a decent shadow caster, the leaves, in fact everything about the tree, the leaves, the branches and the trunk have to be black and the sky has to be white. So a simple desaturation won't work. Let's undo that. So the secret to achieving a black and white image is to make use of Photoshop's channels. Now in its default configuration, Photoshop will have layers, channels and paths down here. You want to go to channels and if it doesn't have that, then just go into window and channels will activate this particular box. Let's look at each of these channels individually. This is the red channel. Now you can see that while the trunk and the branches are nice and black, there's just not enough difference between the leaves and the sky. The green channel is getting better. We can see that the leaves are a little bit darker, but again, just not enough difference between the, the tree and the sky. The blue channel, on the other hand, is ideal. We've got a nice contrast uh, going on here. So with the blue channel just visible, I'll go to Select All, and then Edit Copy. I'm going to switch on all three RGB again to Layers, New Layer, and Edit paste your black and white image into a new layer. Now from here you can tweak the contrast of the levels to further enhance the contrast between the light and the dark. So let's do that now. Let's just bump the contrast up. Get the blacks really black and the whites really white. OK that. And then I'm going to save as, make it a JPEG and call it Foliage Shadow Caster replace it. Okay. Now let's go back to Movie Zoo and create our ambient lighting conditions. So I'd like to set up a nice cool blue ambience. This blue right here. Okay. And I'll just push up the brightness of it too. Okay. Then I'm, the next thing I'm going to do is create my spotlight. Let's pull back a little bit and I'm going to use the right hand button to rotate the spotlight so that it's shining almost straight downwards. Lift it up in the sky and then play around with its properties. Of which the most important is the image field right here. Let's import our foliage shadow caster. See what we get. So immediately you can see in Movie Zoo that we've got this black and white image now controlling shadow and light from the spotlight put up its brightness a little bit and because it's sunlight I'm going to give it a slightly yellow sort of tinge like that. I'm also going to change its cone angle so that it encompasses the whole scene and I'm not too bothered about softness. What I would like you to take note of is this kind of doubling of shadow effects here. Now this doesn't happen in real life. You can see that we've got the, the shadow from the cypress tree 
sort of adding to this, the, the shadow from the so-called leaves above it. This wouldn't happen in real life. So if you're bothered about realism and at the expense of some computer power, then by all means switch on individual shadow. And you'll notice that this then behaves as it should and it's improved things slightly. So now you've got the nice effect of the character appearing to be in a forest glade.